Hi everyone, I'm Serena Fazan and it is Wednesday. Welcome to On The Record, my favorite day of the week and what a day today. Let's go into the studio here at CP Communications Red House Streaming. Joining me on the set, very familiar face, Davin Joseph, you probably recognize him, pro bowler, played with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and you are back on the record. You were episode 17, Davin, and now you're on episode 88. Almost to 100, huh? <laughs> Almost. We're getting there. We're getting there. We also have a remote guest joining us from New York. If we can pull up um, Shu Chi Vs with Guest Box. Okay, how did I do on the name? Shu Chi Vs. Yay! Yes. I did it. <laughs> Yay. So here you are from New York. We have Davin in the studio here. You are an amazing entrepreneur. Your story is amazing that you are actually in Tampa. You head to New York for a conference during the height of COVID, get stuck in New York, and then come down with the virus. But we're gonna to talk to you on how the two of you guys connected in just a minute. So hold on. Davin, though, let's start with you. Con so tell us about your professional football co career right. and how you are, now you own Kong Management Group. Yes, so you know I played in the NFL for nine seasons. And then of course, I can't play football forever. I would love to, but the body just doesn't let you do that. So. I got into real estate, um, just starting by buying uh, affordable rentals, uh, mobile homes, uh, single family homes, duplexes. And um, then I kind of get got into the Airbnb trend. Uh, got really popular as of late, but back in 2015 made the jump to doing more vacation rentals. And so now I have um, some in Tampa and some in South Florida, and I enjoy the space. It's, it's, um, it's exciting. It's, it's definitely a challenge each and every day. And, um, and so now I, I plan on expanding and down that, down the hospitality lodging. Um, that, or that arena, yeah, that area. That arena, that area. And uh, looking to, you know, do some more business in the future there. Well, you know, I, when we get back towards the end of the show, I want to talk to you about giving advice maybe to, you know, some of those young athletes out there that oh, yeah, do need to pivot. So yeah. we will get to that. So, then all of a sudden, here is this crisis, right, that yeah. hits the country. Mm -hmm. And what happened to your rental homes during that time, or your vacation homes? Yeah, rental homes and vacation homes. Everybody was impacted. You know, of course, it's not just my business, but a lot of business in the Tampa Bay area. But, you know, there's restrictions, shutdowns, and, of course, um, different protocols for just about how you do your everyday business. And so we were impacted from, especially with the cleaning aspect, um, the not at one time not being able to do short term rentals, um, rental assistance, you know, was kind of here and there, but you know, the eviction moratorium. But we made the um the decision to not evict any tenants at all. And we haven't had to at all. And so we've been helping our tenant base with um rental assistance and doing applications. And with the short-term rentals, we were able to service people that were coming in, maybe doing some relocations, um, using the properties in a different fashion rather than vacations. And so it, it worked out. You know, God is good. And so we were able to, to still make it through that time. And now travel's picked up, so business is, is back pretty much. Well, and of course, I want to say, of course, you are a class act, not evicting people, yeah. because that's the type of person you are. And of course, you also come from the coach Tony Dungy era, who <laughs> yes, instilled right. that in all the players. Right. I got, yeah. I got, I got to plug that in too. Right. Well, Shu Chi, let's go to you now in New York. Tell us a bit about your business and Guest Box, and it's so interesting how the two of you, you and Davin, came together. But tell us your journey on getting to New York and what happened. Sure, sure, Serena. So um, 
just uh, telling you a little bit about guest box so we curate luxury welcome experiences for hotels to delight their guests with unique products so um, our products are boxes that are co-branded with the hospitality customer and then um, inside the boxes items that they've chosen from our vast list of um, eco-conscious innovative healthy and welcoming products we also um, feature many uh, women and minority run businesses through the box and so it's really that social impact um, sense of discovery and uh, familiarity for for the guest, a more relevant experience. Um, uh, Davin and I actually we got connected through Tampa Bay Wave. So um, my company was a part of the accelerator at Tampa Bay Wave, and that gave us access to some of their board members and um, you know uh, a gentleman named Rich McIntyre, who actually um, you know ha is in the same building and. Um, and knows Davin really well. And so he had heard what I was up to in the very early days. And I believe those were the early days for Davin and basically uh, got us connected, uh, really loved Davin's energy right from the get go. And um, we were coming up with ideas and guest box had already started um, in the vacation rental industry and was expanding in the hotel uh, business. So um, really that's, that's um, a great connection made at a very local level, and uh, you know, today uh, we're actually serving um, Davin's properties. That's so. In, in fact, we're not going to open up the box quite yet, but this is one of your <laughs> amazing boxes, which we're going to open up shortly. But before we do that, tell us what happened when you went to New York, because your intention of going to New York was to attend a conference. Um, run or Tory Burch, yes, I should have worn some of my Tory Burch shoes. Was the speaker right? It was an entrepreneurship conference. But what happened? You're still you're still in New York. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm um, actually from New York, but I chose to build the business in in Florida. And you know the community has just been wonderful. Access to resources as well as um, you know great minds like like Davin. Um, and I actually planned to be in New York last year for a couple of months, onboarding more customers and um, even pitching investors at the time. And so um, I got here March 4th, and March 5th was the Tory Burch uh, International Women's Day event that um, I was a part of and uh, lo and behold the very next week New York shut down and I kind of uh, you know all my meetings got canceled all of that and then end of March I started feeling not so great uh, even though you know all the protocols were on with masks and everything people didn't really know the whole six feet distancing at that time and so I don't know if I got it at that conference or afterwards because there were a few meetings that did happen um, but yes I got I got sick and slowly after as I was getting sick the hospitality industry was shutting down too and so we just faced a really terrible period of me the helm of the company being um, struggling uh, with my health and then also um, you know the industry shutting down and our revenue going down to zero for for what was a couple of months at the time and it's really the vacation industry re re vacation rental industry that actually um, helped us revive it is a space that I started the company in and then we grew to hotel and then with um, vacation rentals just being so innovative, yes, that's the that's the box. Um, you know, we we found our silver lining, if you will. Yes, and so Davin, what? Why do you think this box? And here, I'll I'll give you the box right now. In fact, we can even open this up on the air. Why do you think these boxes are great? And why did you? You are such a huge supporter, though I know of entrepreneurs, and you believe in that. But why why do you like these? guest boxes in your properties? It's the, it's the welcoming experience. I think is it provides them with some items that they'll need, items that they, you know, may want, and then some items that they can explore with, you know? So uh, we do a good combination of um, some snacks, we do some personal hygiene products, and then some other things you just don't really think about. And so, I will, let's take a look at what's it, let's take a look at what's inside your box here. Let's see. Okay, we'll put it back over here. All right. So, so these boxes too are customized for each customized. of the. Okay, so we're opening the box. Oh boy! Like I love like opening up any type of boxes or presents, you know. So each so each client gets these and juicy as you said they're customized. So okay, I, which oh, camera three? I'm looking at camera three. All right. So everybody gets. A welcome, welcome letter. Yes. And, you know, there's nothing quite like that. Correct. You know, it, it really, I mean, I love when I get something 
so personal. Okay, yes. so then there's a bag that you could keep some of this stuff. Oh. Yeah, those are one of the items you don't really think about. Yes, right. the eye mask. <laughs> Do I get to keep this eye mask now that I touched it? <laughs> yes, yes, <sure>. Audra. <laughs> we'll oh, send you. okay. I, okay, before okay, what is this? This is oh, poopery, poopery. Oh, that's awesome. That's one of our popular yeah. brands since the get-go. Like everyone gets a great laugh out of it, and then suddenly they're like, "Wait, this is really useful." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Of course. Um, oh, handmade with love. A mask. Very for this time especially. Yeah. Um, soaps. You can never go wrong with soaps. Sanitizer. Mm -hmm. A yes, lip. Those are is a lip. Um, oh, toothpaste. Lotion. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in this box. Um, and this is a oh, another hand sanitizer, but it's pocket hand sanitizer. And then here, I'm going to take this down just for a second. Um, this is... That's a toothbrush. Oh, a toothbrush. That's a fancy okay. toothbrush. Fancy yes, toothbrush. it has like a nice cover. And yeah. yeah, that's one of our other popular, very well-designed uh, products. Fancy, fancy. And then, let's see. And then the snacks. I love it. Okay. So you have a bunch of snacks in here, like a bar. You have some protein drinks. You have um, chips. This is fantastic. And you, do you custom, so do you customize the boxes for each of the clients? So yes, our customers are the vacation rental uh, owners and property managers as well as the hotels. And so we work with them to understand what their target demographic is like and what they're already providing on property so as not to repeat what's, what's already there as a part of their um, establishment. Um, and uh, we also look at I, uh, things like seasonality right now, COVID. So yes, sanitizer and you know all those uh, personal hygiene products are uh, super important, um, but also we cater to different dietary preferences. So you'll see that some of the snacks are vegan, gluten-free, um, low in sugar or more natural sugars, et cetera. So helping the traveler also set a healthy tone uh, for, their, for their trip. Beautiful. And Damon, we're taking a look at some of your homes right now. Those mm -hmm. are beautiful. So, so right now, during this time, and I know a lot of people are interested in this, what is the market right now? Are more people, are people going back to Airbnbs? Are people going back to, you know, like longer rentals, shorter rentals? What's happening? I think it's a combination. I think a lot of people are going back to Airbnbs um, right now. If I've, summer's been very busy. So it's a lot of summer travel, family travel. Uh, we've been seeing we haven't seen much international travel, a lot of domestic travel. People from Florida going to other, exploring other parts of Florida, or people going on road trips from maybe the Carolinas or Georgia, you know, so the Southeast, driving over to Tampa. But Tampa's become a, a very tourist-friendly area. We're, we're getting a lot of traffic. But um, it's, it's great for bigger groups, families or a group of people traveling so that they can really um, save and so having a laundry room, having free Wi-Fi, having parking, um, a full kitchen, gives them the options to really save money to cook at home, to do their laundry at home. Um, even with young children, it's a little bit easier, and even the privacy also. We're pet friendly, so they can bring pets. Um, some properties have pools, so kids are always fans of the pool. So it gives them a little bit of a private. Uh, retreat away from home and then they can explore the Tampa Bay area while doing some cost savings. And trust me, like if you, once you throw in multiple kids in there, I mean, seriously, yeah. taking them to breakfast, it's like a hundred bucks to take them to a hotel oh, yeah, breakfast, 100%, 100%, right? I mean, go to, go to yeah. Publix or whatever grocery store you like and buy a bag of bagels and, you know, right, yeah, cream yeah. cheese. Yeah, cereal know? and milk and then they'll be okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really interesting because prior to the show, guys, today, I um, am very flattered to be the host of the Visit Tampa Bay, Unlocking Tampa Bay podcast. And they are talking about, especially specifically in Florida, Florida, mm -hmm. the, we're breaking records and the number of people that are coming, you know, to the state, to vacation. And so we are going to go to a break. 
But when we come back, I would love to talk about that with the both of you. And maybe the two of you could also give advice to people out there that, you know, are, are entrepreneurs. I mean, how do you stick through what you guys stuck through? What get, you know, got got you through it and the encouragement to others and especially you know from from a female perspective as well and then from um, someone who really pivoted their career right right, right. right. <laughs> all right everyone we'll be right back stay with us i'm serena fazan a journalist producer and podcast host with the background in television news i know how much time and talent it takes to produce a broadcast quality production but no more Red House Streaming offers a simple, cost-effective method for capturing live action and streaming it in real time to YouTube, Facebook, or any other website. From single camera shoots or multi-camera productions, conventional or virtual sets, and from the state-of-the-art Red House Streaming Studios to remote locations, the professional crew at Red House Streaming, backed by the technology and reputation of CP Communications, allows you to produce more content at a lower cost and with little to no engineering required. That's why my podcast, On the Record with Serena Fazan, is streamed live from the Red House Streaming Studios each week. Contact Red House Streaming today at 800-762-4254 or online at cpcoms.com to learn more. I'll see you in the studio. You know. Uh, oh, we're we're back. We're back on. Listen, we love. We just love chatting. So, oh, oh, gosh, the commercial is <laughs> over. So, Devin and I were talking. About. So, you know, Devin brought up a really, really good point with the boxes. Devin, you were mm -hmm. saying that. Um, Shoot Cheat helps you customize each of the boxes. Correct. And there can be as many boxes as you want. Correct, 100%. So she spoke about seasonality, you know, and as times change, you know, being able to add That's things different. to the box, mm -hmm. take things away, bigger boxes, smaller boxes that can um, help your guests um, with their stay. So, you know, summertime may be sunscreen, right? Um, wintertime, well, not in Florida. I would say gloves, <laughs> but not really in Florida. But you know, uh, there's things you can add and take away from the box, or you can you can do multiple boxes, theme boxes, and so that it really gives you a lot of flexibility to really make your guest feel more thought about. And I think that's it's kind of adding those special touches that when they come to to stay at your place, that they feel like their experience is better. You know, you give them that welcome experience that they feel like uh, this is not just a normal rental. It puts it, it puts you one step above, Correct. honestly. 100%. You know, yes. and people remember. I mean, these are the type of things that people remember, and they're like, "Oh, remember the place where we stayed and we yes. got that special gift?" Correct. You know, I'm going to come back. We are trying to get. Uh, do we have the, her yet, guys? Linda Olson, also joining us. Not yet. Oh, they are still working on it. So the person that um, we also invited on the show, and until we can get her on the show, is Linda Olson, who heads Tampa Bay Wave. And it's a group, right, Devin, that connects right. entrepreneurs. Before we get to her, why, why is it? And I know that you, you know, when you played for the Buccaneers and in right. your other professional sports, you've always been a team player. Of course. Why, why is it so important for you to support other entrepreneurs? I believe it's because we all have something to learn from each other. And, and so we can all help each other in, in one way. It's, it's good to compete against one another, but you learn from your competitors, you know, if you're in the same industry. But there's a lot of similarities between industries and how we can all connect. And so I got with Tampa Bay Wave really trying to add more technology to the vacation rental experience. And so of course, Airbnb is on an app. Um, Verbo is on an app. A lot of people are doing communications through texting. And it's not a, a lot of face-to-face. -face. And so it's trying to integrate those pieces in the calm vacation homes also along with the contactless check-in. We were doing that before COVID. A lot of the cleaning protocols, we were doing that before COVID. But it's is more of trying to give them that seamless experience, leveraging technology, and that's how we, you know, connected with Shoochee with 
and we were able to, you know, come up with how the guest boxes can help on um, vacation homes and give the guests that better experience, the seamless check-in, the seamless reservations, along with, you know, the thoughtfulness of still adding that personal touch. And absolutely. And now we have the woman that is joining us, Linda Olson, uh, Tampa Bay Wave, who connected all of you guys mm -hmm. together. Hi, Linda. Can you hear us? We sure can. Thank you so much for joining us on this show. We had um, a few like and your picture is beautiful. So we have a picture of you. So so tell us about tell us about your organization, what it's about. And it's so great that you brought these two together. There's many clients you bring together. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I could not be more excited to be on this show. Um, Thank just you. kind of ironic, I run a group that supports a lot of tech entrepreneurs and we're having a little technical issue with my video today, but you know, you just roll with it just like entrepreneurs do, right? Absolutely. So, That's um, why I loved live TV too. You know, I mean, I love it, right? We just roll with it. Okay. What can we do about it? Right. We pivot. But, you know, I'll tell you, I'm a, a Florida native. I grew up here in the Tampa Bay area. Um, and, you know, I found myself up in Boston after college working for something they called a dot com. I don't know if you remember those days, uh, but family pulled me back to the area back in like 06, 07. And I found myself trying to work uh, with tech startups here. And I just wasn't really finding my tribe, my group of fellow entrepreneurs. It was just so hard for me to find fellow entrepreneurs to connect with, share with. And not to mention, when I did find them, the resources here to support entrepreneurs in this region was a little bit lacking compared to what I saw were greener pastures elsewhere. And I'm like, why don't we have this here? We can have this here. And actually, I really got to the point where I'm like, we should have this here. Um, you know, what I saw was not about just helping the, the technology business that I was trying to build. But then I saw it through the eyes of, from the community standpoint of, what if we could really figure out how to have more resources for entrepreneurs in this region? What could that do for creating opportunity and options for the youth in our community, not to mention just anybody else here? Technology entrepreneurship should not be based on the geography you live in. The internet's everywhere. So yeah, we're pretty much on a mission uh, we, we started off as a nonprofit, actually really more as a meetup group, very unorganized bunch of entrepreneurs who decided to roll up our sleeves and get together as a, an established nonprofit so we could actually make some change here um, in my hometown. You know what and I say? I say, I say, you go, girl. That's awesome. <laughs> Seriously. You go, girl. And so it's because of you that these two came together, right? Yeah. So a big part of what we do is actually make strategic connections for entrepreneurs in the region. Certainly investors are what a lot of people think that, you know, we do and we certainly do a lot of that. But entrepreneurs and small businesses need more than just investors. They need customers, they need partners. Uh, so anything that we can do that helps our entrepreneurs find new opportunities, business opportunities, help, th help them grow, that's what we are here for. So let me turn to Shuchi. Was this like a game changer for you to be connected with Tampa Bay Wave and also like the female entrepreneurs, right, working together? <laughs> Absolutely. I was pretty much building the company very remotely. Um, so it started from like packing boxes in my apartment and then, you know, kind of like really moving up from there. And in that process, having that sense of community wherever you are is really, really important because of these connections. I know Linda said more than investors, it helps entrepreneurs to, you know, connect with uh, customers and other resources. I think actually that stuff is way more important because that's what will bring investors interested as well, right? And so um, I think that, you know, being associated with the wave really, really helped uh, take my company to the next level. Um, at the same time, we were also in an accelerator in Texas. And so it was like, 
pretty much doing a crash MBA, uh, if you will, right, while running a real company with customers. And so um, really, I think um, different ideas led to uh, different product uh, introductions in the market as well. Like everything Davin said about, um, you know, the guests feeling special and really remembering that experience. We also developed different sizes of boxes and types of boxes for the different use cases for the industry. And all that would not be possible without the different components that actually challenge uh, me as an entrepreneur and challenge uh, the company, right? And, and help it survive through something like a pandemic. Absolutely. So Davin, let me ask you, you clearly, I mean, you came from a very community-based football team that always gave back to the community. I think it's ingrained, ingrained in your soul. You do the same thing for your family. Correct. I mean, you are, I am, you know, like singing your praises because it's the <laughs> truth. Why, why do you feel it is so important to support entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs in the market that we live in? I think it's going to be our job to build a better Tampa Bay. And I think it's, it's I believe it's exactly what Linda just talked about. It's, it's, developing those resources to help people because we have the right people here. But of course, people need resources um, to help, you know, teach one another um, how to run business in Tampa Bay. And it's a very local approach. You know, I'm sure business in New York is different than business in Florida. But there's a, probably a lot of lessons that Shuchi's learned in New York and along with Florida. But for Tampa Bay specifically, is really reinvesting so that, you know, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, our kids have something here one day, you know, and that the entrepreneurs can find success here. And so we want to bring those entrepreneurs with, you know, great ideas and great energy to feel like they can succeed in Tampa. So on that note, Linda, I don't know if you were actually on, on yet, but we were talking about earlier before I got here, I was at... Um, a marketing summit for Visit Tampa Bay. I'm very flattered to be the host of their show as well. Does it surprise you that Tampa Bay is breaking records right now with people coming in, staying in Tampa, um, you know, conventions coming in here? Does that surprise you? <laughs> you know, um, first of all, as, as you know, with Visit Tampa Bay, you, you see the metrics that they collect and report. I mean, Tampa Bay is on fire as it relates to the, the visitor um, uh, activity here. Um, Tampa Bay is a beautiful place to visit, right? Um, with gorgeous weather, so much to do here. Um, but it's also in the last, you know, 10 or so years, there's so much development happening in different business pockets. You're seeing more living options in downtown Tampa and other places. I mean, there's so many people who are invested in really building Tampa Bay into that total live, work, play destination. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the pandemic actually really helped a lot of people to start questioning like, am I in the right place or do I want to actually live somewhere, or maybe even visit, but definitely, you know, where are some other options that um, are are good for my soul, good for my business? And they're finding that this is a place that checks off a lot of boxes for a lot of people. Um, you know, we've been seeing actually lots of technology companies moving to Tampa Bay. Um, I have the pleasure of being on the the front row of a lot of those uh, conversations. And we've got some companies actively working on that right now. So, you know, the more we get the message out there about what's so great about the Tampa Bay region and Florida as a whole, I think we're gonna continue to see more and more people come here. You know, once they get a taste, they wanna stay. Absolutely, it's such a wonderful community. So before we wrap up the show, Linda, how do people find you? How do they connect with you? Well, tampabaywave.org is our URL. We are a nonprofit, 501c3, so that .org is kind of important to use instead of .com. Um, we've got you know different events that we're planning around the community, including uh, another one uh, next month uh, to help celebrate the conclusion of our tech diversity cohort program that we're running right now. Um, I'm super proud of the programs that we do so we can really build a more inclusive and equitable uh, tech ecosystem here in the region. So go to our website and you can see that or maybe some other events in the future when it's convenient for you. Well, thank goodness for people like you in the community, for sure. And 
Shoot G. I'm trying. You know, I stutter too. Like I have a speech impediment, so that's why I stutter with this. All right. How do we learn or how do we find out more about your amazing boxes? I know we have your website. Um, we've been showing your website, but is that the best way to connect with you? Absolutely. Guestbox.co is, we're not a dot .com, dot .co. Um, and then I, you know, LinkedIn should GV us. Uh, you can find me there as well. Um, in fact, like we, uh, the tech diversity cohort that Linda was just speaking of, my company was one of the first in that. And um, they're running multiple ones. And I actually have women, you were talking about women entrepreneurs, women in the region and otherwise reaching out to me on LinkedIn to ask of me about my experience there. So I'm in the process of scheduling those calls, but it's really encouraging to see more and more women starting really interesting and amazing um, startups in the Tampa Bay area and wanting to learn more. So, um, yep, shoot GVS uh, at LinkedIn or um, guestbox.co to learn more about our boxes. Yes, and it's .co. I know it, it, at the beginning, I'm like, oh my gosh, did we did we get the super wrong, as we call it, and it's .co. All right, so yes, .co. Davin, how do we find out about more about Kong Vacation Homes? KongVacationHomes.com. Okay, .com. So, you .com, right. <laughs> and then you can see, you know, the available rentals that we have in the area, even to some things soon to come. Thank you so much. And I would be remiss, everybody, if I did not, if I have Davin Joseph in the studio with me right here on the record, I would be remiss not asking them this question. Ready, guys? Did Tom Brady win the Super Bowl for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course he did. He's on, he's on the he's on the path to repeat. Oh, did yeah. you guys hear that? Is this on the record? Yo, one hundred percent. So why do you think why do you think he was the one that he really was the piece of the puzzle maybe that we right. needed? He was a piece of the puzzle, but I, it's the influence. You know, it's the amount of respect that he has on and off the field. He's a true leader, and um, and Tampa really needed that. And so ta Tampa's always been talented but it's the leadership that was missing and so he was really the piece that of the puzzle that needed to that really fit and he took control of really almost every aspect and changed the culture of an organization and so I think it was just a perfect fit and I had to ask that question yeah it's, I mean, amazing. Not... it's an amazing story I think we've been talking about it for forever about you know how how great of a player, but I think it's really more great of a person yes. that he is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, winning winning the Super Bowl in your mm -hmm. hometown, I mean, hosting oh, yeah. the Super yeah. Bowl. I mean, First one ever. Yeah, you guys, yeah. we can't get better than that. No. We cannot get better than Not that. Not at all. Thank you so much, all, all of you, all three of you, for joining me on the show. We are going to go to my wonderful graphic now that these guys, the guys created that I love, <laughs> where you can, <laughs> these are all the platforms where you can find me, you can share this show, and we would really appreciate that. And once again, thank you so much, all of you, Linda Shuchi. Thank you. Davin Joseph for joining us. Have a great Wednesday, everyone, and stay safe.